Hello folks, Everchanger here, and welcome back to more Pokemon Blaze Black 2. Last time, we caught ourselves seven new legendary Pokemon, and this time we are going to be catching eight more, which is pretty awesome. The first one I want to grab is here on Route 16, and it actually requires Cut, and I planned ahead this time. I brought my Cut Pokemon before starting the video, see? I'm getting better. Anyway, first off here is... Raikou! One of my favorite legendary Pokémon, I really like the legendaries that were introduced in Pokémon Gold and Silver, and this is the first of five such Pokémon that we are going to be catching in this video, which is pretty awesome. Raikou and its two compatriots in the trio will only appear after you have spoken to the Ace Trainer or the Veteran or whatever they are in the Humalau City Pokémon Center, so make sure to keep that in mind. And I also remembered the Quick Ball this time. I'm getting way, way better at this. Which is good, considering, you know, it only took me like 140 episodes. Anyway, mainly the big plan here is, as normal, False Swipe. Holy cow, that did a lot of damage. False Swipe, and then move over to the Ultra Ball. So I will meet you back when I have caught Raikou. And caught. Very nice. Fun fact about Raikou, I believe this was the first Pokémon to get multiple screenshots of it revealed in-game for black and white, which means Raikou was the first dead giveaway that we ever got that there would be animated sprites in this game. Really, really cool. It is said to have fallen with lightning. It can fire thunderbolts from the rain clouds on its back. Very nice. I'll be honest, I can't really decide on my favorite legendary beast from Johto. They all are just so awesome. Anyway, with that, we are now headed to the Desert Resort. Alrighty, here we are in the Desert Resort to catch another Pokemon. I'm going to grab a heal really quick because I didn't actually heal passing through Numbaza City. Now, this next legendary is going to be interesting because it is not Ground, Rock, or Steel type. And as you can see... There is a bit of a sandstorm going on, which means this capture might be a little bit interesting. Right over here, we have Entei. And I gotta say, this guy got an awesome movie. Like, seriously, I don't care what anyone says, the movie with Entei in it, that was a really good movie, like, honestly. Uh, for the Pokemon 20th anniversary, they actually aired it on Twitch, and you could have Twitch chat going on, and... Man, that was, a, that was a fun time. Anyway, I really hope the Quick Ball works on this one, because this guy's going to get hurt every turn from the Sandstorm, because he's pure Fire-type. Yeah, I didn't think that was going to work. So yeah, I can't really weaken him down super far, because he's going to be taking damage every turn, so... I got a limited number of tries to catch this thing. Let's see if I get lucky. I'm really impressed with myself that we got this thing on my first attempt. I was afraid we were going to go to maybe even two or three attempts. It is said that when it roars, a volcano erupts somewhere around the globe. Very nice. Very cool indeed. Alrighty. Now that we've gotten this one out of the way, there is one more Pokemon in this trinity of beasts that we would like to get. And that one appears on... I want to say it's Route 13, it's whatever route is north of Undela Town, so I think without further ado, I will meet you guys right over there. Alrighty, I was right, it is indeed Route 13. We want to head all the way around to the very upper portion of this route, the part that is all the way up on the cliff, because that is where the Pokémon that we want to get appears. It is indeed right up this way. It is right here, and it is Suicune, the last of the legendary beasts. I'm kind of torn as to whether this Pokemon or Raikou is my favorite of the three. Of course, Suicune was on the box of the first video game I ever owned, which is a pretty high pedigree, but I still think that Electric-type has its merits, too. 
Anyway, we're gonna try the quick ball right here, and oh, we got a critical capture. Can we please get lucky on this one? Darn it, that would have been amazing. Oh well. Unfortunately, this guy is packing Aurora Beam, which is a bit of a problem for my Garchomp, although it looks like it didn't do that much damage at all, which is surprising, but I'll definitely take it. Alright, we just wanna gonna wanna weak this guy. Weaken this guy, rather. A little bit more. Alrighty, luckily none of these guys are packing Roar or anything like that, and since there's no awful weather in this battle, all we have to do is chuck balls until it's caught. That was quite painless. That was like less than 10 throws. I'll take it though. It races around the world to purify fouled water. It dashes away with the north wind. Very nice. This is actually the second time we have caught a Suicune on this channel. First time was quite a while ago, if I recall correctly. Anyway, the next Pokemon I want to grab is actually right nearby, believe it or not. It is in the depths of the Abyssal Ruins, so I think without further ado, I will meet you guys down there, through the west entrance this time. Alrighty, here we are through the west entrance of the Abyssal Ruins. The Pokemon I want to find is somewhere down here, although I'll be honest, I don't know exactly how to get to it, so we're just going to have to discover it together. This Pokemon will only appear after you have spoken to the veteran that spawns in the giant chasm after you have battled with Kyurem. So let's see if we can find it here. I've actually had one attempt of trying to find this darn thing down here already. And I had to scrap it just because I didn't find it in time and I got kicked out, which was a little awkward. Hopefully that doesn't happen again, although you never know, it, it darn well might. Um. I'm pretty sure it's somewhere down this way. Let's see here. The uh, guide specified that entering through the west entrance was the ideal way to go, but I think I might have taken a wrong turn already, so we're going to have to explore a little bit more and hopefully we'll be able to track this sucker down. Alrighty, let's see, is it up this way? Oh man, I'll, I'll be honest, I really, really do not like- Oh, there it is! I do not like navigating the Abyssal Ruins. Because it's just such a pain in the butt. Alright, can we get there in the step limit? Yes! Alrighty. That was really close. I have to wonder how many steps we have left. Right here is Lugia. And between Lugia and ho I have to say, I think I like Lugia better. I just like its design a lot more than Ho-Oh's. Alright, let's see if we can get a quick ball in this one, although it's level 75, so I don't know if we can do it. I remember when I would play Pokemon Crystal in my childhood, I had a lot of trouble catching this Pokemon in particular, just because it was such a pain in the butt to find. And it looks like this hack has carried on that tradition. And rightly so, although it's pretty good of them to have Lugia down here in the Abyssal Ruins. I mean, I honestly can't think of a better place to put this thing. Anyway, it is actually a Psychic type, although I think it can learn Ice type moves, so hopefully we can... Oh my god, no. Well, this just got a lot harder because this guy has Recover, which is awesome. Yeah. We're going to be here a while, so I think we're just going to jump cut until I've caught it. That was insanely lucky. Holy cow, that was only about five minutes. I was afraid I was going to be here for an hour catching this blasted thing. It sleeps in a deep sea trench. If it flaps its wings, it is said to cause a 40-day storm. Man, I am so glad I caught that when I did. Pretty sure it wasn't out of recovers, I just got incredibly lucky. Hooey, now let's see, how many steps did I have? Um... Yeah, not too terribly many, so it's a good thing we found it when we did. Anyway, 
now that we have done that, I actually want to head all the way to the summit of the Celestial Tower. Yeah, kind of out of the way, but when you see what Pokemon it is, you'll understand. Alrighty, up here at the top of the Celestial Tower, indeed, we have... ho -Oh. Like Lugia, you have to have spoken to the veteran in the giant chasm before this guy will show up. And we know that as actually what did happen in my game, even though there have been some weird glitches, because when we went to get Mesprit here earlier, I don't believe ho -Oh was here. So yeah, at least one thing is working in this hack. Anyway... Cross your fingers on the quick ball, although I highly doubt it'll work. Nah, I didn't think so. Now, unfortunately, I think ho -Oh also has Recover at level 75. I'm not positive, but I think it does, and oh man. Whoever, yep, whoever put Recover in these guys' move set, like in these guys' level up learn set, Oh man, I would like to rake them over the coals because it is so, so infuriating when you've got it whittled down right where you want it and then, bam, work erased. See, there it is. All the way up back to full, right? Pretty much. Ay ay ay. I'll meet you guys when I've caught it. Yes, the overgrown turkey is mine. Ay ay ay. Recover? Literally the worst thing ever. Its feathers are in seven colors, although personally I only count four. It is said that anyone seeing it is promised eternal happiness. Yeah, they call this thing the rainbow Pokemon, but it's red, green, yellow, and white. And black if you count the eyes, but I personally don't. I don't really get how it's the rainbow Pokemon, but, ah oh well, I guess we'll go with it. Ay ay ay, now that that one is over, we are headed to Route 6. Alrighty, after all this time, seeing this guy spawned here prematurely, we have... Tornadus right here. And we actually get a change of music for once, and once again, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it, these Pokemon will always appear shiny and in their Therian form. Which I think is really, really cool. Anyway, this Pokemon is intended to only appear after you have spoken to the veteran in Humilau City. But, as veterans of this series might know, this Pokemon actually spawned early. I'm pretty sure if we had caught it earlier and then spoken to the veteran, we would have been able to get two of these but I personally feel like that would be a little bit cheaty, so I opted not to do it. Anyway, you know the drill by now, we're going to be false swiping this guy, and thank whatever deity you believe in, I'm like 100% certain this guy doesn't have recover, and that's going to make my life so much easier. Like, you have no idea. ho oh, oh man, there was one point where it used recover three times in a row, undid all my work. Anyway, I'm delaying the inevitable. Let's catch it. And there we go. Tornadus was caught. As I hypothesized, that was very easy compared to Ho-Oh. In every direction it flies, creating winds so powerful, they blow everything away. Very nice. And I have to say, I like the design of all the theory and form genies. I think they're a lot better than the simple recolors that they've been doing that they have, like, in their normal forms. I don't remember their incarnate forms. Yeah, that's what they're called. Anyway, speaking of those Pokemon, there is another one we want to get up on Route 9. Alrighty, here we are on Route 9 for yet another Pokemon. This Pokemon has the exact same spawning requirements as Tornadus. This right here is Thunderous, who is basically the same thing if they were in their incarnate form, but since they're in their Ethereum form, this one actually looks quite different. And indeed, it is also shiny, which is always a plus. 
All right, can we get lucky on this quick ball right here? Be really nice if we could get one quick ball to work in this episode. Please. Man, not even a shake. It's really not entertaining me with this. And it has heal block, which is interesting. All right. How much is False Swipe going to do? Because I've been getting very wildly differing results depending on who it is. Looks like that one did quite a bit of damage. That was the rough part about Ho-Oh because it would do like nothing to Ho-Oh and it would recover more than I did. Hey. Anyway, I believe it counts as nighttime in the game now, so I'm going to start chucking Dusk Balls at it and maybe we'll catch it quick. Nice. Thunderous was caught. Like Tornadus, this one really, really didn't pose much of a problem. As it flies around, it shoots lightning all over the place and causes forest fires. It is therefore disliked. That's unfortunate. I actually quite like the design of this Pokemon. I'm probably one of few in that regard, but I honestly do like the theory and forms of all of these legendaries. Anyway, now that we have done that, there is but one more Pokemon I would like to catch in this video. We are off to the Abundant Shrine. Alrighty, here we are in the Abundant Shrine to go after the last legendary Pokemon for this video. This Pokemon, unlike the previous two, you need to have spoken to the veteran in the Giant Chasm, not the one in Humalao City. I give you... Landorus. And oh boy, if there was ever anything in existence ever that needed a nerf, it's this guy. Seriously, in pretty much every VGC tournament since this guy was introduced, it's been on pretty much every team, except for the most recent one where you were allowed to use legendaries. Yeah. Like, honestly, the introduction of the fairy type nerfed dragons, but honestly, I think the better idea would have been to, like, buff ice type. Buff the ice type and introduce a ton of really good ice types because the introduction of fairy types didn't touch this guy. If we got really, really good ice types and the type just got buffed in general, like, life would be so much easier. And honestly, ice deserves it. I feel like ice is among the worst of the types and it's really disappointing because some of my favorite Pokemon are ice types. Yeah, I guess I could have worded that a little bit better, but like, I don't know, I just want really good ice types, and a side effect of that happening would be a nerf on this guy, which I think really needs to happen. Anyway, let's catch it. That's what I'm talking about, there wasn't even a cut there. <laughs> nice, we just caught it on the second ball. That's amazing. From the forces of lightning and wind, it creates energy to give nutrients to the soil and make the land abundant. Very nice. I also really like the design of Landorus as a Pokemon, but I just feel it's way, way too strong. It's kind of the internal trio master of the forces of nature, kind of like Rayquaza with Groudon and Kyogre. Anyway... With that... Oh, come on, I thought that one a few episodes ago was going to be the last Audino. Uh, you really had to kick me while I was down, did you, game? Uh, I was just going to cut this fight out, but no, I have to rant about that. Too many friggin' Audino. Anyway, with that, I am headed back to the nearest city to heal. Alrighty, and with that, I think we are going to end things off. Once again, a little bit short, but I feel like having been recording for over an hour and getting about a 15-minute video out of it, I think that's pretty alright by YouTube standards. Anyhow, this past episode, we caught eight legendary Pokémon, those being Raikou, Entei, Suicune, Lugia, Ho-Oh, Tornadus, Thunderous, and Landorus. And next time on Pokemon Blaze Black 2, we are going to be catching 
all but one of the remaining legendaries in this game. So without further ado, thank you all for watching, and I will see you guys next time.